Hey guys, for Blind Wave, I'm Eric. I'm Calvin. We have legs. We do. And we're in London. We're here for Star Wars Celebration. Uh, yeah, it's very nice back there. Uh, we are also right under, or right beside, a airport. airport. Yep. So you might hear some air stuff happening. I think right. they call it airplanes. I think you're right. Uh, we're here to watch The Mandalorian. We can't possibly start Celebration without watching this because people are going to be coming <laughs> so up. So many spoilers. We don't want to get spoiled. So we're here to watch The Mandalorian. Um, last week, we did have a poll. The poll was, do you think Mandalorians really attacked that shuttle? 33% of people said they did attack it. Hmm. 66% they are being framed. No, Order 66. Yep. Uh, we have a bunch of comments too, but we're trying to get through this quick. So thank you guys for commenting. I'm going to look through those after this uh, this episode. Yes. You guys ready to start? Wait, you hear that? Air stuff. Starter store is here. Huh. Montalus. I was going to say that's a Montalus. It looks Montalus, but it also looks weird. It's got to be. You can't see through the floor. <laughs> Uh, Corrin, yeah. Corrin. He's gonna eat that fish! Like, he's gonna eat that fish. Or their friends. They were not. Oh, so they just cool. Whoa. That's so cool. But your clothes are wet. So they just, she, they just wanted to be in there. I meant to say that we were not aware of the majestic Imperial presence <laughs> in this sector, and we were glad majestic. to hire your protection. We are not Imperial, either. Who's the captain? I don't know. We are Mandalorian. Oh, and sadly, you're too late to hire us. You see, we've been commissioned to Costco. You see, we were already hired by a certain Mon Calamari viceroy who has reason to believe you absconded with her son. It's a lie. Dude, they're just rolling with an imperial ship. Yeah, yeah right? It's crazy. We have all suffered too much from war. No, I didn't say anything about war. I know it was for love. Love? We knew fate was not on our side. Who cares about fate? I love you. Oh, and I will always have you. Captain Jones. Jack Sparrow. <laughs> so, try to check him down first. I mean, I assume they have a capital ship. Uh, they have a capital. Yes. I don't know. Like who? Who they are? What happened? They've taken control of the ship. And how'd they do that? I guess we're going for a ride. I like rides. <laughs> Ooh. Those ex Imperial droids. Welcome to Plazier 15. Please proceed to your Hyperloop pod. I like its visor too. It's got like a mirror visor. Yeah. Imperial droids on an independent world. It's the outer rim. Your guess is as good as mine. Is that direct democracy? Yeah. Hmm. I wonder what direct democracy means. Your presence has been requested by the leadership of the planetary democracy. I'm afraid we have more pressing matters. Perhaps at a later time. Please do not attempt to leave the vehicle. Oh, this man. is not a request. Jeez! Jeez! That thing is fast! Man, it's almost as fast <laughs> as the Mortal Kombat Annihilation balls. Join us! Come! It's a party! It's a party. <laughs> Come. Tenacious I thought so. What? Jack Black? Jack Black. I hope you like secretions. Take a look at I hope you like secretions. Please. And Lizzo. <laughs> Whoa. Look at this. I love all the alien prosthetic work, man. Say the frog. The frog please. My husband came here as part of his rehabilitation. He oversaw the rebuilding. Dude, that armor vector looks so cool. It's so fun. Since it was originally settled and we fell in love. 
Hold the baby, please. Dude, he his doesn't take so kindly good. to strangers. I'm so jealous. <laughs> <laughs> that was cool. Dude, all the aliens look pretty good. They look amazing. The food looks cool too. There's just one condition. What? You really must see the view. Right this way. We'll just be a moment. Enjoy your meal. Don't get up. Let's show our guests. Man, there's so many aliens. Yeah, there's an Ishi Tib, there was a Bith, there's just like yeah. there's Rodians and they're a look like air. What kind of malfunction? I mean nothing too serious at first. Unexpected power cycles, deleted task stacks. Mm, then it got worse. Traffic accidents, uh, heavy Sky equipment easy. failures leading to each. Look at her yeah. flower she got thing. Fucking cool. Respectfully, what does this have to do with us? Our constables are ill-equipped to confront battle droids. Battle droids? They are battle droids. <laughs> it's all oh. battle droids. They've been rehabilitated for civic... Yeah, yes! <laughs> Unlike my brethren outside your city walls, I am not a mercenary. Apologies if that is the impression I gave. What I intended... Oh, he loves it. ...that I would hope that this excursion would be viewed as an act of diplomacy between our two planets. In fact... Plazier 15 would formally recognize Mandalore as a sovereign system and petition the New Republic to recognize it as such. That's a big good thing. The offer stands nonetheless. What do you think? You had me at battle droids. <laughs> These droids nope. were all reprogrammed to serve the community. <gasps> wow, Christopher. Stop Brown! The droid's reprogramming was a complete success. Until one day, an isolated event. Oh no! <laughs> Ryan! Oh, we're on new track. And others. Dude, the V1! <laughs> 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 oh, no. A collection of malfunctions that are severely hammered off. This is. Jeez! Oh no! It's a cook drill. Oh no! Oh, get general. Oh Come my on. gosh! <laughs> Give us the list. Well, for that, you'll have to go to the lower level and speak to the Ugnots. Ugnots. I have spoken. I have spoken. Their ancestors were the Grand Mythos. This is going nowhere. I am Mandalorian Din Djarin, friend of Ugnat Quill. You will answer our questions and help us with our task. I have spoken. Yes. <laughs> I'm so glad. <laughs> Do you know Quill? Marowin is Quill. We will investigate the dangerous incidents. We would appreciate your help. He is such a good, like... Everything, <laughs> but especially like speaking to uh, other like, people and stuff. Yeah. Here are the locations of the droids you seek. Did the word. Thank you. We are in your debt. I have spoken. I love that his relationship with Quill has like yeah. come back and meant something. You know. Ugnats always seem sure of themselves. Well, it's the only lead we've got, so we might as well have a look around. Feels like a classic Clone Wars episode, doesn't it? It does. It does yeah. Makes me miss this type of thing. Yeah. Any of them look suspicious? They all look suspicious. <laughs> oh. Oh. Yes. Their base function was warfare. I thought they were just checked out. They were. Yeah. Uh, what are you doing? Then this shouldn't phase them. Uh, sir. It's like the Boston Dynamics. I was gonna say. <laughs> Hit with hockey sticks and shit. Oh, jeez. Oh, it's, it's too much. So, Recertified, huh? It's like an iRobot moment where, like, the one robot yeah. that's like. Just, I want to see a B2 Gremlin bit. Hit those rocks with Fifth Element. No! 
rusty droids back to work, hey, or just this, I'm just this one's back? Really feels like, I think this was the first positive one, I have to clear it first. Oh, the street life. Jeez. Dude, this is a cool city, though. This is very cool. Oh. At least it's slick. Oh. <laughs> hey, it's like Wally. <laughs> Yeah, right, they just show up there cleaning. Um. Human life is so short. They don't ask that much of us. Organics created us. It's the least we can do. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Look at all these droids. Yeah. Do you have a record of what each of the suspects ordered? That is not how it works here. There is no selection of beverages as with organics. Here, droids are served Nepenthe. Nepenthe. These are the remains of the latest malfunctioning droid. Who makes the Nepenthe? Yeah, who writes the patch? I don't know if this bothers me or not. I don't know how to feel. Do I get freaked out or not? <laughs> what, is, what are you doing? I'm not sure. <laughs> it's like a, it's a robot, but it's a needle. The particles are definitely present. What are the chances that they're still active? Pretty high. As long as they don't start shooting needles. It looks like an interrogator. Right? They shot the needles, Aaron. Oh. Alright, it's definitely this Nepenthe stuff. Yeah. Nepenthe. Nepenthe? It's just got... It's just... <laughs> they're still active. Nepente. Yeah, I just sucked it up into it, right? Yeah. And... Well, this, yeah. What's that? The striations, which is an aberration in the metal, probably malleability limitations at this scale. No. It's writing. Rotate the perspective. Enhance. Yes, here we are. They were originally manufactured by the Techno Union. Techno Union. They were requisitioned by the security office. Is that unusual? It's illegal. There's no record of this transaction on the government registry. It's a direct democracy, right? By an individual. Is there a name? Our head of security. I'm gonna say it's either Christopher Lloyd or Jack Black. Commissioner Hellgate. Hellgate, Hellgate is his name? That's a cool name. Mm -hmm. We have some questions for you. Sorry, I have to check the data farm for anomalies. We know about the Nepenthe and the nanodroids. They didn't malfunction. You programmed them to disrupt an attack. You're coming with us. Give yourself up. Give up? I never give up. I didn't give up to the corrupt republic. I didn't give up to the empire. And I won't give up to you. You're a separatist. He's a separatist. He's old enough. Count Dooku was a visionary. He was cut short in his prime by the Jedi and forces. Okay, let me get that for you, my lady. Your toast, Luffy. What are they playing? But your score changes. Move your dress. Whoa! Whoa. Oh, girl, you're cheating! <laughs> what are you doing with Commissioner Hellgate? We found the cause of your malfunctions. Is this true? I'm afraid it is, my lady. 
Lady Bo-Katan Kreese, and Din Djarin of Concordia, I grant you audience with our deployment of Mandalorian privateers. I also give to you both our highest honor, the key to Plazier. Is it the cape or the cape? <laughs> One of those rabbit droids. It's a key. It is a key. It's a big old key. Yeah, it Boss is. key. And to this little one, I grant knighthood. Knighthood? Knight Grogu? He's a Jedi and a knight. So many gauntlets. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. I didn't realize how many they had. Yeah. What's that shit? shit? Yeah, so big. That's the ship they took from Gideon. Well, the the, the little one, not the oh, big, big one. The battle cruiser, yeah, they took that one. But I think that is one that they just had already. Yeah, there's an Imperial light cruiser. It must be, yeah, maybe one of the other ones they stole or something from uh, where the planet was. Then I challenge you. One warrior one to another. One warrior to another. <laughs> <laughs> Only the strong shall rule. Oh. Yeah. Neither, neither one. Uh, I don't want either of them to die, though. I know, he was boshy. I needed to shield. He's cool. <laughs> oh, Jack here. Goldberg ain't one of those. Jetpack spear! Damn. Man, we just out. shot one of them! I know this is my life. Yeah! Oh my gosh! Oh man, I thought they were. Around his neck, just cause. Yes, the shield. I love the shield. Yield. He is every bit the Mandalorian that they were. He's orthodox. <laughs> but according to our ways, the ruler of Mandalore must possess the dark saber. Then she shall have it. Just, just take it, Bo. Yeah. This belongs to you. It's she did win to be against the crab. No matter how well intended. It's not a gift. I lost it to the crab. She got it from mm -hmm. the crab, right? Bo-Katan rescued me and slayed my captor. She defeated the enemy that defeated me. Loopholes, baby! I told you. <laughs> it's like the Elder Wand. Yeah. She kicks ass with that thing, too. She moves so much better than he does with it, right? Yeah. I do love that she can have a shoe on. The thaw thing. Yeah. Or the box light rock. I haven't seen anybody else do that, though, really. It's a big step for the den as well. Yeah. To give that up. I don't think he likes it. <laughs> Is that it? Yeah, it's gotta be. We got the fleet. Bryce, Bryce House Howard. Oh right. yeah, what a crazy episode. Starting out with a corn and and Mon Cal Ramon Jones. <laughs> <laughs> well, from the way that started out, that is not where I expected it to go. No, man, that was that was an insane episode. It really did feel like a classic Clone Wars episode of. Meeting the leaders of a planet, mm -hmm. going on that mission, helping them with something, yeah, and then also gaining a fleet as well. That's yeah. crazy, yeah, and such well, a fleet, too. And the, the dark saber Bo Katan thing makes sense, too. And like, watching her use that is like she's so much better than Din with it, yeah. you know. She is so, like, I know she could get it from Din if he was trying to fight her against it, you know, yeah, yeah. but and no. yeah, Calvin, it is Elder One rules. It is. Does, does the Elder One know that Harry disarmed Malfoy? Yeah. <laughs> so it makes sense. Yeah. No, I, I like that we're, uh, you know, I, I've kind of wanted this since we've introduced the way and the way that these children of the Watch Mandos operate, which is like 
you have what the Mandalorians are that we've seen like in Clone Wars, especially Do- Death Watch versions of them. Sure. And then you have this, and I think that we're going to be able to like forge a new way, a new path in a way. Like, uh, what they what sure. they say, like a well, foot in both worlds. It's like she walks in both worlds. Yeah. yeah. Um, Axe talking about like he's not he's not a Mandalorian. Yeah. It's like he took the creed and he's following the way, you know? Exactly. So like, like everybody, it, 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 it's like a lot of like religious ideas or uh, denominations, right? Like people split because of A certain, difference of opinion. Yeah, yeah. exactly. But a difference you, of interpretation, yeah. I should say. You know, there's 30,000 Christian denominations, but they're all Christians, <laughs> you know? Yeah. They, these, there's different beliefs in the Mandalorian, sure. but we are Mandalorians. I like Bo talking about like there's enough blood... Of our own has been spilled by us fighting, right? Mm -hmm. We saw that back with Clone Wars, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Death watching them fighting Mm -hmm. against the Mandalorians and killing other Mandalorians. Yeah. And now they're like a like a rare yeah breed. They're a commodity. There's not a lot of them, and the ones that are around are hidden mostly. You know, so it's it's crazy. Yeah. I also enjoyed seeing battle droids again too, which is cool, and having uh, Matthew Matthew Wood Wood, (laughs) yeah voicing. uh, Yeah, it looked great. It looked great in live action, you know. The we haven't I mean, seen those CG it, effects since. I feel 2005. like it looks better than you know, the prequels. It better. Know? It it does. Sure. Like <laughs> By I, a lot. You know, a lot of times I go to sleep, I'll turn on like Star Wars Episode One or something yeah. like that, just to like go to sleep. It just reminds me of nostalgia things, mm-hmm. and I already know it by heart, so I don't like stay awake trying to watch it. Yeah. Sure. Um, and like watching those, like when they come in land, and you see like that first shot of them inside the the hangar, I'm like. Okay, yeah, they're battle droids. You can see that in here. But this one, like, everything looks so much more real. Yeah. And, like, so much practical stuff that they used, too, yeah. with all the droids and stuff. The, like, re- the reflection that in the nighttime really, really sold it. Mm. Yeah. yeah. It was just really cool. I love seeing that. Like, you can tell our background right now is not an effect because you can see the reflection of our lights <laughs> in the back. Yeah. <laughs> you know? It just sells the effect. You instantly ground yourself. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I, I loved uh, the diversity of aliens around that table it was so cool yeah it was really cool to yeah. see especially in this you know the disney era because like the first half of the disney era we have kind of just got brand new aliens and we weren't seeing much of those kind of legacy designs sure. but here it feels like you know we pop the head off certain action figures and put them on a new body and i, I kind of liked that i, I sure. like that world building mm-hmm. uh, especially in this outer rim world which you usually go to the outer rim and it's like we have none of the resources of the Republic, the Empire, the Separatists, you know? Yeah, and here um, they have here, all three. <laughs> here they, they have like a utopia in a way. I mean, droids are the ones that are doing all the manual work, but... Yeah, but it's a neat idea to have like all the citizens, like they can focus on voting yeah, yeah. and then being like artistic yeah. and just enjoying life instead of like, I've got to go and work sure. and do this and make money. You just have these droids doing yeah. it. And Aaron, I like what you said too. I think because, you know, it is like pretty three pretty big cameras. I don't really know Lizzo as much. I know of her. Well, but you like, you, oh, and it's Lizzo. I'm but like, generally, you didn't know Megan Thee Stallion, but you picked up Lizzo <laughs> real quick. But like, it's it's interesting because sometimes when you watch shows like the, you know, Law and Order, mm-hmm. it's like, okay, who's the most famous person? They're the killer. Sure. But here, you, when you were like, wait, I don't know who it is. I'm like, because if it was only Jack Black, yeah. it would be Jack yeah. Black as the yeah. guy. If it was only Christopher Lloyd, yeah. So that's that makes a lot of sense why you sure. do that. <laughs> Cause, well, because when they got there, I thought I'm like, okay, well, who would have been sneaking in? Is it the security guy? Yeah. Or is it the guy who was known? Like, you can't have an yeah. army because you attack people <laughs> or whatever, yeah. you know? Like, but I, I feel like... could have been it. I feel like meta-wise, story-wise, you're going to suspect the Imperial, right? Because sure. he's part of the you know the Reformation program or whatever, the Amnesty program. But yeah. what we've seen is like, oh, how how good is that? Like, you know, he seemed like he was pretty cool guy yeah I would be very interested to see that character as a hard imperial sure too the twist that would have caught me would have been if it was Lizzo yeah that's what I'm saying I wasn't expecting that, that well that I wasn't I wouldn't have expected that on a meadow thing but because it was like a cameo of a high profile person I was like what if it is the queen sure you know like so that was an interesting way for the the casting to put suspicions on characters I would never have Sure. Does that make sense? No, yeah. I get you. Like it's if, really interesting. Yeah, whenever you have that Law and Order episode, it's yeah. always like if he's recognizable, that's the. Oh yeah, Sean always. Austin's just playing some, you know, guy over here that you meet third. You know, yeah, like, yeah. I bet you he's not the killer. Sure. <laughs> now I did have, and this one might not be fair, but there was an NCIS episode where Sam Witwer was in it. Yeah, it's actually a, I think it was like a two part. He was in like sure. two episodes, and he was a big part of the story of it, yeah. but he himself wasn't like the killer the or whatever. Killer. Yeah. He was the one like. 
that was affected by it and mm-hmm. telling his side of the story and everything too. But I think they suspected him. It's like his appearance of Dexter. He's like, well, he could be. He's not. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but also <laughs> like, I, killer, yeah. I recognize Sam Witwer, but I don't sure. think he's a big enough name that, like, especially back then. Oh, we all recognize him. I, look, no, no, I we, bet we, you, we do. We do. Aaron, I'm going to, I bet you tomorrow if I but, ask a thousand people that I happen to see. But that's not. Do you know Sam Witwer? Yeah, that's not They're going to all say yes. Go home and ask your dad or 10 people at Walmart. <laughs> Yeah, that's a more. My fair dad's comparison. gonna be like, "Oh yeah, he was yeah. on uh, Being Human, right?" <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> no, Did he shit. season eight of Smallville. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit, that'd be such a pull, right? Dude, I would freak the fuck out if my dad's like, "I've been watching Smallville." <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to connect to your interests. I don't like the boy that's gonna be Doomsday. <laughs> you know, he's a he's a monster. But he doesn't want to be. <laughs> you know what though? Yeah, it, it's interesting. The names they had. Yeah. They didn't tell us the one guy's name was Hellgate until after there was suspicion on him. Sure. But you had like Bombardier yeah, and yeah. Hellgate as like their names. Yeah. Both of those aren't like nice names, sure. really, you know? Like yeah. he's a he's gonna bombard us, you know? That was such mm-hmm. a fun episode. I like the resistor bar a lot too. Yeah. Oh yeah, that was great. That was That's really cool. cool. And that, I love how everyone stopped and was like mm-hmm. that blue chrome protocol droid mm-hmm. was really neat. Yeah. I, I wasn't sure if it was gonna be a droid. That was causing problems or mm-hmm. anything, especially with like Din yeah. being like so against droids. I'm like, do you go where droids are the problems, or do you go with a, you know, droids? They just follow their programming. Yeah. It's the people who are programming that are causing the problems. Sure. It is crazy to me. I don't know why, but Christopher Lloyd said Count Dooku. Yeah, he was <laughs> a visionary. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Christopher Lloyd was cast as a Count Dooku supporter, a former separatist, which we know a lot of the separatists were good people. Sure. Yeah. yeah, you know they weren't necessarily bad people. No, they just were misguided and tricked by the Sith, just like everybody else. It was such a convincing argument that mm-hmm. Dooku didn't have to work that hard. Yeah, but when yeah. he did, he could. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. That's crazy. I wonder what being exiled on a moon would be like. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Like, are there other people exiled there? Will it just be him? Like what Australia. kind of moon is it? Is it like the moon from Bad Batch, mm. where there's like that electric eating? Creature, remember that? Yeah. Oh, hey, yeah. That moon had nothing on it. <laughs> like, I don't that, know. Would, that would not be great. The moon of Paraquat. I imagine they just drop you off and you can't get off, though, right? I assume yeah. so. But, like, like the Canary Islands? Mm. Is there, like, a little, like, village there of exiles? Maybe. It's like you get to live with some other people, or is it just you and you gotta figure it out? <laughs> figure it's. I don't it's, know. It's, gonna, he's gonna figure stuff out and he's gonna go back in time and stop this. Is that, that 2.1 gigawatts? gigawatts, yeah. 1.21. Dang it. I need to rewatch Bag of Peanuts. Thanks. <laughs> Give me your nerd card. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it, I don't have my My Hero license. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't bring it. I always uh, have my My Hero license, just in case someone does that. Damn it. Yeah. Damn you, London. <laughs> it's back in Ohio. Uh, um, I think we should also have Q&As, We got some right? Q&As, yep. <clears throat> I'm sure there's going to be a bunch for this one. All right, the first Q&A is from Fat Jesus. All right. He says, there are only two more episodes after this one. How do you feel about this episode being a side mission of a side mission? I feel like I just watched iRobot for 30 minutes instead of getting to the plot. What even is the plot at this point? Fat Jesus, I I don't understand this. I'm sorry. I had so much fun watching this episode. If if this feels like a side plot to a side plot, then... look. We're not watching The Mandalorian. What? Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Television is not movies, right? When you go to a movie and it's two and a half hours and you're like, okay, we don't we only have so much time. We only have so much time. We, we have a bunch of episodes in this season. Like We have more than one we, season. We can afford to go fill out, look, peek beyond the curtain, see interesting things, look sure. at interesting characters, stuff that we wouldn't see. So I don't know. I think that some people are very, you're not wrong for being like, I want the plot to move forward, but... I don't know. I, I don't know if I would trade it in for a moving plot. I had a very, well, very fun see, time with this. I think there's also things with character that yeah. you lose when you don't have episodes like this. Like, you might have an episode, and it's, I, I often think of it like D&D things, too. Like, yeah. there are things that might be more geared towards character, specifically. Oh. Din doesn't like droids. You know, Bo's trying to prove herself. She's talking about, like, you know, how the droids operate and stuff. This may yeah. be things to help Din get over, possibly. Well, it's also showing that those you know? skills as a leader, being able to bring people of, you know, ill repute or, you know, division together, right? Like, sure. sure. Din kind of, he has his, his he bigotry. has a method. <laughs> yeah, he has his method, but he's not, he, he couldn't do this stuff by himself. He has, uh, 
He has sure. some bigoted views against jewels. <laughs> I mean, it's like the idea of like, you know, we could have frog titties, right? We could have had the frog story where it's just like, all right, you go from here, you go there. Yeah. You don't see ice spiders. Yeah. You don't have X-Men show up, right? Sure. It's like, why don't we just go there, deliver it, and see the other yeah. Mandalorians? Like, yeah, but in this process, we we helped this frog lady. We mm-hmm. met the X-Wing pilots. We've added some more stuff to the story. Sure. Now, a season later, one of those X-Wing pilots comes looking for Din yeah. to get his help for something else, right? There's been a connection that's been made yeah. that that story, ah, that wasn't important. It's like, it no, doesn't seem important. You could be first. seeding little yeah. things. There was the Ugnaught story, right? Where he's learning to write a blurb. Did you have to watch that? No. Was yeah. it fun to watch that? Sure. sure. And was that important in this episode? His yeah. relationship with this one Ugnaught helped him with the relationships with these Ugnaughts, you yeah. know? Star Wars. There's, yeah. there's Star Wars connections is... and stuff that you can have. And I don't think every Clone Wars episode was like, all right, here's the whole story mm-hmm. of a Clone Wars pushing every, just only the plot. No. It's like there are small stories within yeah. this overarching story. And like, can you take out some of those and just watch the main little bits? And personally, uh, I, for me, like once you've once you've seen the story of the plot, well, now nothing is going to hook you in. But episodes like this are a really fun rewatch for me, mm-hmm. right? Because it is it's being able to have something so singular and so different. Sure. Like that. And, you know, I think that's the kind of stuff that George Lucas was going for when he based this off of Flash Gordon. Well, Flash Gordon is exactly <laughs> Serious, that. You know? Flash Gordon is yeah. an episode of you came here, sure. you did a mission, and you left to somewhere else. Or maybe it's to be continued and we have, like, the overall mission that we have to get to later. Yeah, sure. But it's like a stepping stone to where we're going. So yeah, I don't think that things like this are like, well, that's bad and we're wasting time. I think it's like, this is story. It's filling out. We're seeing more of Star mm-hmm. Wars and the galaxy and everything. And, and I like seeing that. several plot lines that have been dormant for seasons. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I want to see Din and Bo start to have, it doesn't have to be a, a relationship like romance, but yeah. I want to see them have a relationship where like, their friends like a and professional relationship. Or in, whatever it is. Like, he so, can be the diplomat. <laughs> yeah. Like, I like seeing them grow in a friendship as opposed to when they first met and he looked at them and said, you're not Mandalorians. And in this episode, she looked at those people and said, he is a Mandalorian. Yeah. You know? And I like having those yeah. moments and you don't get that without having reasons for them to spend time. Like, if they just landed, that whole adventure they had having to work together, yeah. you lose all that and that's camaraderie and growth you have, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. And, you know, hey, we're not... We're not the plot police or anything no, no. like that. Like, this is just our perspective. If it's something that you want more focus on, you're not wrong for believe- wanting that or whatever. I just, you know, plot is just one part of entertainment, storytelling. It's not everything. Sure. Like, you gotta, like, I fully appreciate the costume, the design, the production. The sound effects in this were fantastic. I mean, it always is, but for some reason it felt Even special. The music was different and unique in yeah. this one. Yeah, and it's I, really fun. you know, I think that you cast... Jack Black and Lizzo and uh, Christopher Lloyd. Lloyd to capture a certain feel, which isn't necessarily like Andor. It's not like Rogue One. You sure. know, this is a little more fantastical. It's a little more about, you know, wizards in space doing cool stuff. <laughs> Plaser 15. Yeah. No, I, I really enjoyed it. Um, Son of Dark Helmet says, I have a feeling this episode will split people who really like it. Or call it ridiculous. Personally, I found it very enjoyable. Reminds me of Zany Clone Wars episodes. What other random actor would you enjoy seeing show up? The uh, random, I mean, Kyle Gass, just to get Tenacious D in Star Wars. That would be great. Mm-hmm. Um, well, if you're going to do that, then get Marty McFly in here, too. I <laughs> so, yeah. Who would be an actor that would, I would just love to see in there? Um, Patrick Stewart. Yeah. Well, how would you feel with that guy? Would that be a good thing or a bad thing? Timothy Dalton? Oh, man, I'd Timothy Dalton, yeah, for sure. Put him in there. Patrick Stewart would be amazing as well. Like, I think it would be awesome to see it, but people would be like, no, he's Star Trek. What sure. have they done? Yeah. You know? <laughs> Split yeah. it down the middle of Ian McCallum. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That'd be good. Yeah. Those are some good choices. Ken Rion says, I'm conflicted because I feel like Bo Katan was always supposed to take Mandalore back, but also, I really want to see Din have the Black Saber. How do you guys feel about Bo being the ruler? I don't know if Din needs to be the ruler. I've thought about it, and I've thought about like who's better to be the ruler. Is it better for Bo, Din, Grogu, yeah. Boba Fett? You mm-hmm. know, and I don't know who's going to be the best ruler. I mean, I think they can all be rulers of different aspects of Mandalorian culture. It could be cool if they go that way. Like, like, a, like a council? There doesn't have to be one absolute top and then like... Say like 
Bo-Katan is, is like the ruler of the Mandalorian people. It doesn't mean that, that Boba Fett is like subservient to her. He's his own, he has his own thing going on. Maybe yeah. part of this episode is just that, right? You come here where you see like this Imperial and like how things used to be and what they've changed it into. Sure. And then Bo looks at Mandalore and how they used to do things and maybe looks at like maybe how we could do things, right? Yeah. Maybe right. we couldn't, maybe we don't need a Mandalore as mm-hmm. in like one person to rule it. Maybe we could have like a group that runs yeah. it and helps work things, sure. you know, or something a di- different. A direct democracy. <laughs> something like that. So like maybe that's part of what this episode goes with too so is like, like how do we lead Mandalore Mandalore Chitan Mandalore Jaren Mandalore Vizsla sure we already had so many Mandalores already yeah. why yeah. not have more than one at a time I mean you have yeah that could be interesting build some new dark sabers <laughs> they, they all everybody like, has one yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they all put it like like the knights around has Vizsla has like a dark axe <laughs> yeah do we even talk about Grogu got knighted he did get knighted on what's, yeah. it, what's his planet called uh, Plazier 15. Plazier 15. Plazier 15, yeah. It was, what was it, like the night of the something, something independent agency yeah. or something like that. Well, yeah, she was rewarding him for his, for cheating. <laughs> <laughs> like, she got a hell of a streak. Like, <laughs> Flygon cheating and gambling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but that was to save a slave. Yeah, I, all, all is that the four spoils that you're right. Uh, let's see. The Real UC says, uh, have fun in London, guys. We are. It's Thank very, you. It's very fun Thank so you. far. Uh, another good episode by Bryce Dallas Howard. Loved all the cool cameos. It's always great to watch Christopher Lloyd and Jack mm-hmm. Black. Mm-hmm. Question. This faction of Mandalorians don't have Moff Gideon. So did Sabine take him or someone else? I'm thinking that it was all staged. Um, mm. I was, I've been re-watching Mandalorian with my yeah. kids, right? And we finished season two. And in that, there is an entire ship blown up. Yeah. There's like no parts almost left of it. Like mm-hmm. it's all over the place. But he reaches in and grabs that Beskar spear completely unaffected. Yep. And I'm like, how did Beskar break off and get stuck in this thing? So sure. yeah. I think there's shenanigans afoot. Some shenanigans mm-hmm. afoot. Could be. Uh, MCU Forever, a bit in- unsure about the situation with Bo and the Darksaber. And while it's cool to see a uh, Separatist this far ahead in the timeline, I did wish to- it was a droid revolution. <laughs> You didn't I, mention I mentioned the that Casillo did that, you know? Well, there's well, so many different ways this could have gone. Yeah. It opened up so many paths to, like... Yeah, like is it said, Jack Black? Is it, is yeah. it a droid? Nice Republic 2 it had cut, it was cut content, but you can do a mod that restores a lot of it. It was an entire droid planet that had, like, revolted at one point, and they just, like... And they just broke off. away. Yeah. And, it was really cool. That is cool. Uh, question, though, from MCU Forever... Uh, what will Din's overarching story slash role be going forward? Also, Corn and Mon Cal. Maybe Wookiees and Trando next time? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> uh, I mean, Din is a follower of the way. Like, some of the highest, you know, things that they do with that is, like, they protect foundlings. They, like, what, what happened to him, right? The Death Watch came and saved him, and he's now done that for another child. And maybe if he can grow the Mandalorian culture back they can be a force of of good in, in a way you know yes they are uh, a force of power and a force of war but that doesn't necessarily mean that that tools those tools can only be used for mercenary work and bad stuff it could know? be cool of like especially you know, in a galaxy that doesn't really have jedi we've lost the jedi mm-hmm. i was gonna say yeah like they could just be the new age replacement for the jedi yeah like in a way there's yeah. a similar kind of of role yeah uh, that they could take up, you know, weapons mm-hmm. are a part of their culture, just as the Jedi wield lightsabers. Yeah, you know, you, ha- you have a similar kind of uh, ethics as far as mm-hmm. you know protecting the people. I mean, that wouldn't be a bad thing. Yeah, and they they collect foundlings just like they would, and uh, and they're like young powerful Jedi. and like intimidating and all these things that like you they can also have, a have from Jedi, right? Like a Jedi shows up, and be like, oh, a Jedi, yeah. you know, we don't take, you know, we don't go against the Jedi. Yeah. It's like the droid. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> so like there's that, yeah, there's that reputation they have. You see a Mandalorian, I think that you kind of get that same idea. You do. So it could be kind of cool to have like, yeah. you know, like they can't, the New Republic is having trouble policing the Outer Rim. Mm-hmm. Maybe you have like the Mandalorian start working on helping the police and yeah. Yeah, protect the Outer Rim from pirates or ex-Imperials yeah, or, sure. you know, whatever. Yeah. No, I, uh, you know, Din being a follower of the Children of the Watch and, Guarding Mandalorian culture that closely. There's a lot of cultures that have these traditions that are deep seated, and sometimes you're like, I don't know if this really makes sense, but you have to go real hard to be able to save everything else, you know. Mm-hmm. And what can the children of the Watch teach 
ex wolves in the new Mandalorians, you know? They can find a way to recreate something. I think that's going to be really cool, and I think that could be a, a good avenue for Din to go down. Because, sure. yeah, the show is called The Mandalorian, and we refer to that as Din John. But, you know, Bo had that line, but you think your father was the only Mandalorian? The Mandalorian can be Bo. The Mandalorian can be Paz Vizsla. The Mandalorian can be Grogu. It can be Bo. The reason they put that mask mask on your face is because it doesn't matter who you are. Once you put this on, you're one of us. Sure. It's really cool. And I think that you can have that be the show focus in a way. And Din being a a vehicle for the audience. Sure. It's a way of giving them like a unified front but yeah. without taking away their individuality. Yeah. And I think having Bo be like one of the uh, main focuses that we've been following with it, like we've seen her do the same thing with Din that mm-hmm. she's done with Boba, sure. that she's done with all of the the um, the, the uh, Convert. Mm-hmm. Covert. The, yeah. Covert. All the Covert. Convert was the episode we had. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like all of them, she has called at one point or another not Mandalorians yeah. or cultists or you know all these other things. But sure. I feel like she's starting to come around now to the idea that Mandalorian can be the culture. It's not like what your past is. It's not mm-hmm. all this other stuff. It's are you accepting of the way or whatever yeah. the creed is that they're going to do. Din so, is like the innocent that was brought in here and grew up with it, right? Like yeah. as a child, he was saved. Mm-hmm. Whereas we've seen her the other direction. She was the enemy. She was the terrorist. She was the the person that brought war and fear and not for the greater cause, right? Mm-hmm. So yeah. having her be that other side. I think it's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. So I'm, I'm definitely interested to see where they go with it because Din's story could be far greater than what we expect before or it could just be as like he's going to be with Grogu and sure. that's, you know, he he sacrificed a lot for him. Yeah. He showed him his face. He had to go bathe in the waters again because of it all. Yeah. But maybe it's, maybe his could be as simple as like I must take care of this mm. foundling and grow my clan yeah. or Grogu or, my clan. What's the next question? <laughs> uh, Lloyd says, I've loved every episode of the season so far, but it does seem like they've been undoing a lot of the plot points from season two's finale. Nevertheless, it was still very fun. How do you think they will wrap this season up with only two episodes left? So the idea of the finale being like, you know, Go- Grogu and then, you know, Den separating, right? Uh, not giving the dark saber to her, you know, and then he does do it. Like, I-, I can understand those points. Um, I would say, like, I feel this way about some people that say, like, the sequel trilogy has ruined, like, Anakin's sacrifice. Like, when you say that, it makes me think you don't understand why that was significant. Like, it's not significant that Grogu and Din were apart. It's significant that he showed that kid his face. He took everything that he believed in and said, that does not matter as much as showing that I love you and Mm -hmm. look at me, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, that's a significant part, and you can't undo that. Them just being together, the, you know, the next day doesn't undo that. Sure. You no. know, like. No. Yeah. Like if I went against my beliefs for something with my kids yeah. so that they could, and then they go off to wherever they're going. Yeah. And the next day I'm like, I, I need, it's a mistake. I need to go back. Sure. I need to go find them again. And I go find yeah. them. It doesn't mean that what happened in my goodbye exactly. and my sacrifice is like unimportant or wasn't yeah. in, important in, the, in that time frame. We're, right? at, we're at celebration right now. We're <laughs> celebrating the 40th anniversary of Return of the Jedi this year. And. I, I have heard online people being like, oh man, they really ruined, you know, Anakin fighting Palpatine in that movie, you know? And I just always, I, I can't get behind that because it's not, that's not significant because some grand prophecy and the balance of the force, that's significant because Anakin Skywalker couldn't save his mother, couldn't save his wife. Given the opportunity to save his son, does, yeah. you know? Like that's important. That's why these stories resonate. Like, he didn't have the power to do it. He didn't have the power to do it. And then suddenly, Luke Skywalker asks Darth Vader for help, and Anakin Skywalker answers. You know, sure. That's significant. It so, is. Like, I, I still find a lot of significance in the, in especially episodes like this. Because you do have, like, you know, Lizzo and, <laughs> and Jack Black. Like, they come together because they love each other. Like, yeah. that guy was an ex-Imperial. I don't know what he was like, but it seems like that love changed him, you know? And uh, maybe Bo, Din, all these other uh, characters, they can find that change in their, their, the love for their culture and their people, you know? Mm-hmm. So I find it pretty significant. But again, it's, if you feel differently, that's perfectly fine, you know? Sure. I get what you mean. Like, is it, 
has been undone that they're giving Bo the Darksaber after he fought Gideon. I don't think his fight for Gideon was important because he wanted the Darksaber or yeah. needed the Darksaber. I felt it was important because he needed to stop Gideon and save Grogu. Because yeah. mm-hmm. he was going to just walk in there mm-hmm. and take Grogu and Moff Gideon fought him. Yeah. Right? So the idea now is like, well, he had to do that. Yeah. It's not important. He didn't want it. It's not a growth point for mm-hmm. him to have this saber. I, I, him not having it, him having it doesn't affect it to me. I mm-hmm. think. Yeah. All right, that's all the Q and A's, um, guys. We're going to be having a ton of stuff coming out uh, here at Star Wars Celebration, so you got to make sure you stick around. We need to have a poll for this episode, though. I got one. It's kind of strange. Okay. All right. So my idea for the poll is talking specifically about Matthew's performance as Battle Droids. I personally love it because I did love the Clone Wars and mm-hmm. Episode Three kind of like went in the more direction of Matthew Wood, but Episode One had a very different performance from Battle Droids. It did. Where are you taking them? Very uh, monotone. Uh, that is not confused. No, uh, you're, you're under, under arrest. arrest. They're still kind of funny, but they were very. You know, they didn't have as much personality. Seeing them again here, obviously, I love hearing Matthew Wood sure. performance come out. But do you pref- like which one? Do you prefer for you live bef- action? You prefer the more robotic ones or yeah. the more personality battle droids? Sure, right. Like I'm always gonna love Ahsoka no matter who's playing her. But when it's in animation, it's something special that it's you know actually extant for me. But sure. seeing Rosario Dawson and then anticipating that show, like I'm not gonna be like, well, I must pick one over the other. But with the Matthew Wood performance thing, do you miss the old? Uh, more robotic feel of the B1s or do you like the more kind of campy Clone Wars performance in these? Maybe something like that? Yeah, I'm okay What'd with that. What'd you say? I think I gotta love the personality ones more. Like, the, the in episode one, like I talked about that being like one yeah. of my favorite movies for Star Wars especially mm-hmm. and like, you know, that scene there where it's like, where are you taking them? Like, that's fine. But I also love like the why and I also love mm-hmm. like the don't shoot! I'm yeah. sorry. You I'm know? sorry. <laughs> yeah. Like, like I, those moments there yeah. resonate so much more with me. Where it's like they they almost feel bad too. You yeah. know, like there's a personality within them instead of it just being like pew pew. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. So I would probably go with personality more. So personally, for me, would you yeah. say, same for me as yeah. well. I really love just deepening the performance of of making them not just like not just clunkers, mm-hmm. but having them have personalities like we see all other droids do as sure. well. Sure. R2 and 3PO have their own kind of personalities and stuff too so I think that there's like having the other battle droids do that adds to that as yeah. well mm-hmm. although there's something scary about like the commando droids not having it yeah right sure. like I've never seen like they're more sterile yeah I've never seen them show up and be like yeah. wow yeah. you know they, sh- they never talk and they're just there to kill yeah. the, the only scary. real reason I say that sometimes I don't prefer it as much I mean I'm a fan I'm biased towards those one, the, the Matthew Wood ones I sure. love Clone Wars and I love all the gangs and stuff but sometimes I do feel like it undercuts the seriousness of like, should I care when a droid is destroyed? Sure. Because sometimes, you know, when a clone dies in the Clone Wars, I'm always like, no, my baby boy, you know? Especially now, but when, right? a clone, when a droid, you know, falls off, and why? I'm like, ha, 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 <laughs> you know? Which is fun in itself, but sometimes I'm like, should I care when droids are destroyed? Sure. Yes, they're, they're you know, toasters, but I love toasters. Yeah. It's weird because like if R two if R two was just thrown off, you're like, no, exactly because no, we yeah. care because we develop something with it, right? Yeah. But maybe I don't know. Like does does having like the cutesy more you know personality thing like does that rub me the wrong way when they're treated that way? But then I think about these other droids that I do love, you know. So I don't know. What do you guys think? Let us know at patreoncom slash we We have that poll. And again, make sure that you're staying tuned right here to Wave Squadron. Yes. Where we're going to be ne- having a lot more coverage. Next episode, we'll have it out as soon as we can, but we're still going to be kind of within our yes. London travel stuff. Yep. So it may be late or it may be delayed or we might have it out on time. So mm-hmm. just bear with us. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out. And if you're walking around Celebration and you see us, you know, come say hi. Uh, mm-hmm. We'll be there all four days. Yeah, we'll be. So, all right, everybody. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Guys, thank you so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed this reaction. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on the next episode. And if you're going to be at Star Wars Celebration, make sure to come say hi. If you want to hang out and talk, t- talk about Star Wars, just tap Eric on the shoulder because he will ignore you because he claims he's deaf on one side. But I think he just likes to ignore I us. have doctor's notes. Oh, do you have a note? Do you have them with you? Give me your note. It's like 30 years And old. your nerd card. It's in Ohio. Still owes us.